This is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel. I want to go over some of the changes I made to the cart motor. Give you a look at where it's at at this moment. As you can see across the top here, uh, what I've done is take the coil control circuit and attach it to the back of the individual coil. Number 18 wire for the power. And they're tri filer power wires with a trigger wire, which actually makes them a quad filer coil. But each coil has three power wires plus the trigger. And it's a non centralized design now where each coil, if you look at the back here, each coil has its own circuit for that coil attached. So there are only three wires that run around the outside. Power wire, the ground, and the return. The trigger is now controlled with voltage. So the change in the resistance of the trigger is not how this motor is being controlled any longer. It is now strictly voltage controlled. When I run the voltage up to 120 volts, it pulses the cat box, which takes that up to 150 volts. And then the motor is running about 4 amps at 150 volts, and it's driving the wheel. But I'm capturing roughly around 80% of that energy back into the batteries. So the energy's not being lost um, so all that energy passing through these these stay f fairly cool at that higher resistive level for the trigger so the trigger's not on that long so the goal here is to drive the induction generator to take over for that part of the operation so the wheels being driven by the variac until the point where the induction generator is up to speed and the induction generator takes over for the current that's being drawn. The coils, the coils push the wheel which drives the induction generator and then anywhere from 60 to 80 depending on the voltage is being recaptured back into the batteries and then used uh, conventional uh, inverters to, to create excess power by charge, keeping the batteries constantly charged. So that's the plan. Design is a lot cleaner than, than the first version of this design that was using the smaller coils as you can see here. And now, with this design, it allows uh, me to add as many coils as I want around there and wherever I want. And the way they're set up currently is they're sequential. So this one fires, and then the one down there fires, and then it comes back to the other side. One of those fire, jumps back up here. And all that happens in the span of between one of two of these magnets each one of these coils fires sequentially to, to create a constant push on the wheel as opposed to a pulsed like a pulse motor that's pulsing and then there's a gap before it pushes so this allows for a constant push even though it is a pulse motor it's being sequenced in a way that allows that to be constantly under load to push the wheel because if any of you have done any experiments with induction generators or any generators, as you increase the load on the generator, you add drag. And the drag in a pulse motor situation means it slows down. And even the plain fact that when these fire, they're actually firing somewhere over here. So between here and here, this coil fires almost in between those two magnets and the reason that happens is probably because the resistance is so high 
but the Bedini design um, that's how it overcomes the the back EMF of the coil so by firing in the middle it's not firing directly against the magnet but what you give up there is torque so still got a lot of experimenting to do here and I might end up going to optical triggers and that would you know still leave the Bedini recapture uh, diodes in place but instead of using the the number 24 wire that's wrapped up in here that works like a magneto to fire it we would go to some type of optical trigger so I could dial in where I want this to fire now I'm working on this uh, but I wanted to show you where I was at this moment so right now polypropylene capacitors across each phase from one phase to the other, there's 72 microfarads in polypropylene capacitors across the phases. And then these are 160 microfarads on each phase. There's another 180 in the box for the AC. It's basically a way to store the energy and not have it slap back. Kicks in, it jumps up to 160 volts, and then instantly starts to slow down because there's really nowhere for the energy to be stored. So what I've done here is add these capacitors and also from one of the phases goes through a diode back into a 20 ohm resistor at about 10 watts I think and that runs back to the center of the induction generator where all three phases in the motor meet. So the way it's wired that that gave me an extra 10 volts right away so that's kind of where we're at uh, made some changes so I could get a reading straight off of the thing and not hold a tool while I'm trying to experiment so without any further ado here let's get it running I'm making 56 volts I'm using 157 volts pulse at 4 amps to do that. But I'm only drawing 120 off the house current. The caps are pulsing on the input because as it pulses, it adds a little extra pump to the capacitor. So, that's kind of where we're at. Let's get a look at the front of it here. It's now at 35 amps into the batteries. So So that's basically it. This is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel. Signing out. Look for more videos. Check out zeropointfuel.com. Got a lot going on. We're almost there. Hang in there with us. And we'll see where this goes. Thank you.